showing a beginner world editor. Hopefully this is a very beginner world editor tutorial. So the first thing you need to do, which I didn't actually do yet, is you need to open up the design document, which is over here in the Vision Stocks folder. If you are learning to use this for another development, this will not be relevant to you, but for the Visions World Development Team, you need to open the Visions Technical Design document so you can have all the commands available. And while we're waiting for that to load, I will show you how to switch to another world, uh, another zone. So this is a Corian zone we've been working on, and this is kind of a test area we've been using near the master's house, but we want to open a new space. Um, I'm not going to save anything because I didn't do anything. So I'm going to change space without save because I don't need to take the time to save because I didn't actually modify anything. And then we're going to choose a space from the list. Today we're going to choose the Marion Village space, which is N35 E32 Marion Village. And I will select that and then choose Open Space. And that is how I move to a different file. And then we wait for it. There's no way to get around that part. Just have to wait. If you can hear the words I'm saying, and I'll tell you what I'm clicking on, and you can see the area I'm clicking, it should be in the same area on your screen that it is on my screen. Here's the design document. The part you want is the spawn point names, which are down here. So in the rock section, there are these crystals. So you can do little crystal spawn points. Or you can do the larger rocks for mining where if you crack the rock open, you will get these drops of different items. These are the ones I would prefer that you use. And then there's also the chickens. And so you can use these names here. And the part you want is at the beginning. So this is the part you want to use in the spawn point name. Those are some other things you can add if you have a need for them. The leopard, gift box, lamb roast, green corn, things like that. And then there's also the trees, and so these are the trees you would want to add. These trees drop various numbers of logs and branches. And so these are the items that you would want in the Visions Technical Design Document. And now the zone is finally starting to load because OpenOffice is no longer hogging all of the RAMs. And we're over here near Saloy. The starting point is near Saloy. And so let's go ahead and start with dragging and dropping some of those trees. So we'll start with a spawn point. And that's here on mine. So it just says spawn point. You'll see I'm in the entities on this list here. Under the assets tab, you may start out in a different tab when you first load. It might be on properties or options. You just want to choose the assets tab, go to the entities folder, and drag and drop the spawn point out of the list onto the ground. Then you want to go to the properties tab and make sure you're next to the spawn point name and then here is where you'll get the name of the tree and you will put the tree name right here we we'll use a mature white pine for this one it must be exactly as it appears on that list it has to be the same capitalization spacing underlines everything has to be the same so we can come over here and now if you press control C and you point your little yellow marker on the ground it will point another one and I can make a 
juvenile and maybe an old growth next to it. And I just changed the name here. I can double check and make sure that's what it looks like, and it does. You can also put static trees in the world, because we did do a test and we found that we can't have all of the trees be killable trees, so um, we can go over here and We'd like some palm trees, and I don't have any killable palm trees yet, so we can just add a few of these. You want to make sure it's the first one in a set, and not... And then you want to, if you want to rotate it, you press the shift key, and then you grab the colored ring that you want to rotate with the mouse, and you just turn it like that, and then you can move it with the arrow keys, like this. can place some palm trees on the ground, like so. We have a few different palm trees to choose from. We can place some up here. You just drag them from the menu and put them on the ground and it will put them there just like that. And you want to make sure they're actually all the way in the ground. Sometimes they appear to be floating and to do that you want to get up close and look up close. Yeah, see that one is actually was very much floating. Now I'm having trouble grabbing the one next to it. So I use the S key to move back, the W key to move forward, to fly around the world, and the mouse, I use my right mouse button to point the camera where I want to go. It works for me. That was really floating. It was floating really bad. So that's why you have to get up close and check. Sometimes from far away you can't tell what they look like. And you just have to get up there and look. That one's in the ground. This one isn't anywhere near where I wanted it to be. And it's way up in the sky. And we'll put it over here like that. How are these guys? That one's floating also. So we just have to put these in the ground. There's just no way around it. They're just floating. So you have to drag them down by you pull the blue arrow and you just pull them down. And so those all look better. And you can go ahead and place some more and sparsely around. Now let's say here's a tree. I like this tree and I want another one. I can grab it. It's awfully deep in the ground there. And then I can come over here and I can place it over here. Right where I want it. And by just doing control C and then I'll put it where I want it, just like that. And maybe it looks a little oddly shaped, and it does. See, somebody has made it really skinny on one side. So I can just fix that under the Properties tab. So the X was at a 4, and then the Y and Z were 8, 8. So I can just make it more evenly proportioned by making it 8, 8, 8. It's like 8, 2, 3, and 8, 6, 3. There, and that's a little more evenly proportioned. If you get a little boxes like this, you just tap the shift key once and you'll get your arrow keys back. And let's see, okay, we wanted to do some chickens in the yard. Let's, who wants some chickens? This house gets some chickens today. So we go to our assets folder again, and we go back down to the entities, which is bound to be here somewhere. There it is. And we grab the spawn point again and we place it in there. And we look at our chicken names, which were up here. 
So we have one that's just plain chicken, and that spawns the Tanagrian red chicken. Then we have some other chicken names. We have Black Orpington, Bluff Orpington, Rodick, Buff Sussex, Moran, White Leghorn, White Faced Black Spanish, White Faced White Spanish, Dorking, Chalkidic, and Sumatra. And so we want to put some of these in. And so we have to go to the Properties tab, to the spawn name, and give it a name. And so that will tell what breed of chicken it's going to be. And we put them around here like this. And we just put those names in. And they do have to match exactly. And I just do control C to copy paste it and then I just edit the spawn name and we get different things. And uh, we want to be sure to save our work. I'm going to use my mouse, so I think I notice this is floating a little bit. See how this house is? So we're going to need to fix this. We either need to level the ground or put it deeper in the ground. Looks like we need to level it because it's way deep back here, floating in front. So we're going to go to the change terrain height here. And now I want it bigger, and so I'm going to change the size of my circle by changing the size slider. And I'm going to do it about, I'm just going to type in a number, I want 15, so I'm not going to try and slidey slidey, I'm just going to get 15. Now I'm going to take a sample of the height that I want, which is right here. by clicking the ALT key, and the ALT gives me an eyedropper, and that will sample the exact height that I want. Now this is set to absolute here, and so I can do control, and you'll see it turns my circle to a square. And so that is going to cut into the earth where it's heavier than, deep, higher than that, and it will raise the earth where it's shallower than that, and it will make me level the ground for this house. And so I'm pressing control and I'll go all the way around. Just like this. I'm gonna have to get those chickens out of the ground now. They're all gonna be drowning in the ground. Um, now I'm gonna come down again to about a four and it's on average and then that will soften out these edges here and so you can smooth the edges. And that's how you fix broken ground, uneven ground, or if you have houses like this one that don't have a foundation and you have to level the ground to make them work. You have to do it this way. Now you can change the strength if you want it to have a little softer sloping. So that's the, what the strength is on that there. So you have to go all the way around and fix all of these things where it's where it was floating and where it's so we've cut into the ground and changed it. And sometimes it's hard to see. You might I'm going to go to options, I think there's a way to turn off. Plants, how do I turn off the plants, I forgot. Scenery. 
I don't know. I don't remember how to turn off the plants. No, nope, that's not what I want to do because I still need to see where the house is. Game visibility. Not the lights. I don't know. I can't remember how. I'm just going to ignore it. I think there's a way to turn off the plants, but I don't remember how to do it. So I will just keep using my little editor, smoothing this all out. <sighs> Inside the house. There we go. Hopefully this is where we wanted this house to be permanently because we're forming the terrain around it now. I don't I didn't look at the map first. We do have some city maps to follow and I didn't look at it, so hopefully this is right. Um, city maps are also in the miscellaneous folder on the SVN and you can go and you can find any of those maps and look at them if you want to look at them. So you can follow the map of the city more closely and put things in. Usually it doesn't show where houses are though. We're lucky if it even shows us where landmark items are. Some of them are more detailed, some are not. And I think we had trouble finding a map for Saloy. So we just do the best we can. Put things where we think they're supposed to be and hope we're right. But if you think about it, even in today's society, people build houses and demolish houses and move their house. We even have mobile homes, right? So houses are not really a permanent thing in a society, as much as we think they are. Landmarks, however, are a little more permanent. You'll see a church that stays there for a thousand years, the same church. so. Those can be more permanent, so we do try to be careful with the more permanent structures when we know where they are. We will put them where we can. Also, we're doing life-size models in a 1 18th scale world, so not everything always fits exactly right. Okay, so now we're going to go back to moving objects, and that's this button up here, this gray circle with the arrow on it that lets us pick <laughs> objects up. We're going to get those chickens and make sure they're all out of the ground. I think that's still lucky there. Maybe not. Okay, a little bit. So I just clicked the mountain icon to change terrain and I went back to the gray circle icon. Um, I messed up my house again. There's a chicken. Make sure they're all, in, see that one is in the ground too, so we're just going to get them out of the ground so they don't fall through the world. We didn't need chickens under the world. Okay. And so that looks good, and we want to save that again. And then I also wanted to um, to show you about putting some rocks in the ground. I'm going to grab a spawn point there. I cheat like that sometimes. And so here's this really sandy area. And when I built it, I was thinking that we would have rocks here. So we can do two things. We can have some rocks that people just pick up off the ground. Well, we can have some that they crack open, and I kind of like the idea of cracking them open. And so we're going to come back and find these crack openable rocks. And we'll try the yellow gem vein. And we'll put one here. And then we have to change the properties. So now instead of a tree, <laughs> it is suddenly going to be a rock. Except I just... Mm. 
Make sure I spelled vein right now, Jim. Okay. All right, so that should work there. So now we have a yellow gem vein there. And we can have a gold or stone on this one. And so we have an opportunity to get gold ore from there. And we also have these rocky areas like this. And so we can have an actual rock. Maybe we'll put in uh, a blue gem vein here. a little kind of an eddy area. And so this is all painted water. We didn't get the actual water in here yet. Um, we're just going to go with painted for now. I don't have time to place a bunch of water in. Placing water takes a very, very long time. We'll put a dark red gem vein here. And ideally I would like one of each kind of gem vein at a minimum in each zone. At least one of each kind in each zone. Um, but the zones are huge, so uh, it can take a while. And so here's a nice little area up here in some rocks. We can have some right there in this little valley. And we'll call it a bright red. We'll put up there. And so that one will drop the things that the bright red gem vein drops. And here we have really rocky walls. You look like you should be able to find some rocks here, I think, right? So let's put some here. Maybe right down here. Yeah, we haven't done a brown gem vein yet, so we'll do brown. And we'll do green, purple, turquoise, as we see. We can make them hard to get to if we want. It's a really special one. And there's a pool up here. We might want someone to come up and find this pool. If they can. Have to make sure they can get to it without having to fly because that can be hard. I don't know if they can get to this one. These are pretty steep. Hmm. Maybe they can get to it up here. If they climb up here. There we go. Put it right there. I think they can get to it up here. So we'll put a purple one there. Okay. Anyway, so that's how you do it. I'm not going to paint the whole zone for you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to put some of those in. <laughs> and, and so I just want rocks and trees and decorate the cities a little bit. Um, here's another river. You can come up here, put some rocks up here on this side. You see down here where it splits, so you can follow up both sides. And then this zone goes pretty far across. You can change the speed of your camera using these buttons here. So I um, can go a little faster. If you follow the coastline, see there's lots of room for trees. So we need a lot of trees planted in the forest, although not so many that it lags, preferably. And you can fly faster than the chunks can load. So sometimes you might be flying along and then have to sit and wait. Um, like now. I'll follow up here. Uh, trying to follow the <laughs> where the chunks are loading. Okay, we're getting there. So over here we have Marion. And this is the other city on this map. This particular zone only has two cities. And this one is 
uh, historically this one was demolished um, and then they rebuilt it and around 100 AD it was still kind of in a state of ruins and not very many people lived here so we don't have a lot of things here but we could put a couple more houses out maybe around the trees if you want to take out some of these larger trees and replace them with some killable trees that's cool um, put some rocks over here in these rocky areas wherever you see rocks painted on the terrain you can put some placeable rocks like this I'll put a brown gem vein there and so just do like that and um, see we have some rideable horses here what is this this is these are chickens these are all going to be one breed of chicken if you want to change it and make some different breeds you can do that and um, I think that's good for a start that will that will get you started that's not everything there is to know but that's a good start